Hello and welcome to another episode of the Mission TV show. This is one of the special editions where we're taping at the OCI Leadership Re uh, Training Retreat at Cahada Springs, Georgia. And this is a really cool place to be because there's a lot of missionaries from all over the world coming here with their experiences to share, to compare notes, to get training and things like that. And today we have a couple all the way from the other side of the world in Africa. And you're not only around this way, but you're around this way too. To the south, yeah. <laughs> so you're, what country are you in? We are in Zambia. Zambia. Mm -hmm. And where is Zambia? Zambia is sort of in the middle, in the southern part of Africa. Okay. And surrounded by about eight other countries. Wow. So if you look towards South Africa and you go a little bit north, you find Zambia. Just north of Botswana then? North of Botswana and Zimbabwe. Okay. So how many, what language do, you, do they speak there? Swa Swahili? There are 72 languages. <laughs> so 72. they've made the main language English. Wow. Um, I, I guess it comes from the colonial times, uh -huh. uh, the British coming in there. But do most, people, do most people speak English then? I would say, in, well, in education, in the, in, in the schools and colleges and so forth, they teach the English. So okay. most people do speak English. Okay. Just when you go far into the bush, you'll find people cannot speak English because of education. Uh, so what kind of uh, religious background are these people in? I mean, there's a lot of Seventh-day Adventists, or what's the belief Zambia system? Zambia is still a Christian country. Uh -huh. Um, seen as a Christian country. Uh -huh. You have a few Muslims and other types of religious groups, uh -huh. but if you want the ratio of Adventists to the population, you have about 1 to 20, which is quite good. Yeah. In that yeah. I think we, in Africa, is probably the highest, um, or second highest, I would say. Uh -huh. uh, I think Africa. Malawi, or one of those countries, is the highest. Okay. So then what project do you, are you involved with there? My wife and I at Riverside Farm Institute, uh -huh. um, which is a training institute, supporting institute of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh -huh. uh, situated about 65 kilometers south of Lusaka, okay. uh, the main city of Zambia. Okay, and you have some photos that you yes, can show sure. us? Yeah, you can see just a, a eagle eye view from the mountaintop to see the different uh, buildings and some of the things that's happening on the farm. That's beautiful. It gives you an idea of what it is. Okay. Riverside's main focus is training, mm -hmm. and we have four basic trainings going on, mm -hmm. and we teach people agriculture because it's an agricultural farm, mm -hmm. which sustain our evangelism. Uh -huh. We have a school of evangelism as well, teaching um, how to do evangelism, how to reach out to others. Uh -huh. And then, of course, our lifestyle program as well, teaching medical missionaries. Uh -huh. um, and then I've also another practical class is the tailoring, teaching uh -huh. people to be also self-supportive. Uh -huh. They go out, they can make clothes, sell it. And in these practical classes, we usually have non-Adventists also coming. Uh -huh. And many times they are baptized um, after the five months and going through these classes because the teachers also present to them spiritual subjects and not just the actual tailoring wow. course, courses. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so wow, that is a lot of bananas. <laughs> that is one thing. Since um, Dr. Foster bought the farm, he was the first owner of this farm, mm -hmm. um, he started planting bananas. So Riverside has been known for banana farming. <laughs> and this is just an example of the sizes of bananas that wow. sometimes we harvest from there. Wow. But that's not the only thing we do. Okay. We have various industries uh -huh. to support our ministry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And this is one we buy maize from local farmers. Then we grind it in our mill and then sell it as well. Oh, excellent. We have for our own children on the campus, we have a, a, a Bible school mm -hmm. as well. Some of the neighboring kids also come to the school to, mm -hmm. to learn. So how many people are living on your campus then? We have about 30 families living wow. on the campus. Uh -huh. And They're those the are staff, all our staff and workers. Okay. Um, but this, those are not the only ones. There are day workers coming, um, some other permanent workers coming from other places as well. And what's your positions at the... Myself, I'm currently the director at uh -huh. Riverside, uh -huh. and my wife is my secretary. Uh -huh. and helping at the Lifestyle Center being the director there. Very good, very good. How long have you guys been there at the center? 
We've been at Riverside now for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, in the beginning, we didn't plan to be there so long. Uh -huh. We thought that we're only being called for a short period of time. Uh -huh. But the Lord has showed us that this is where we need to be, so we stay until He tells us to leave. Excellent, excellent. So what called you there in the first place? My wife and I were teachers uh -huh. um, in, in South Africa. Uh -huh. And I taught at a Adventist school, mm -hmm. Sir Davin, okay. for three years. And we had the opportunity to bring a group of students for, for mission work up in Africa. Mm -hmm. So we traveled through Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Zambia. Zambia was the main focus. Mm -hmm. And so we did it every year. Mm -hmm. And in probably the second or third year, somebody told us about Riverside and said, well, let's go look. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we found uh, Pastor Grabner there. Uh -huh. And when he saw us, he spoke to us he realized that Juanita was doing the lifestyle course mm. or did the lifestyle course mm -hmm. and he wanted to start a lifestyle course mm -hmm. and he said don't you, don't you want to come to Riverside uh -huh. and that's how we ended up that same end of that same year at Riverside uh -huh. that was in 2001 okay end of 2001 the irony is with some of these trips that we took up to Zambia we didn't know Riverside existed uh -huh. and one specific year our vehicle actually broke down just outside of Riverside and we sat there during the night trying to fix this thing having not much success and uh, not knowing Riverside is even there. <laughs> just right there. Wow, that's known, best kept secret. Huh? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh my. Now, that's... now what we have is you can see here there's a lot of problems in Zambia when it comes to things like hygiene and those type of problems. Mm. So when we go around, and I'm speaking especially now, when you go into the village areas with mm -hmm. some of the people where the education is not so much, mm -hmm. you find a lot of issues. Like you can see here, we've got a little boy with a pot belly. Mm -hmm. Most of the times it's worms. Mm. So you have to go in and you have to deal with these issues and teach the people about it. Right. Um, the next picture that I have doesn't look really good, but this is no. often the kind of problems we get where people have huge wounds. And they would walk like that for months and years because they don't know what to do. Wow. And so then they would come to us and say, you know, well, what can I do? Can you help me? Yeah. So we deal with a lot of these things and then we teach people hygiene. We teach them how to prevent these things and not just actually how to cure them. Right. Um, a lot of hygiene teaching, a lot of lifestyle teaching. Uh -huh. so, so that is one of our main ways. So something, a wound like this. What would cause a wound like this? Like a spider bite or a... This specific gentleman had... It, this wound started with boils. He would have one boil that would rupture. Uh -huh. And as it ruptured, it would start the next one. And it just got worse and worse and infected. And, and until it never, started eating his whole leg. And he just never washed it? Mm -hmm. And he didn't know how to take care of it. And nobody right. else cared to help him. Wow. He had been to hospitals. And nothing anybody could do could help him. And they had told him to go home, and we found him next to the road with a dirty little cloth on around his leg. Oh so when we God. asked him what's wrong, he first he, he pushed us away. He said, well, go away and leave me. Nobody can help me. Wow. But praise the Lord, we were a little bit more persistent than that. And we started working with him. And then only he started speaking to us, told us what happened. And then they opened spiritually too, and you can start sharing with them that, right. you know, the same way your wounds get clean, Jesus can clean us from where we've come from. Praise the Lord. And you can get a lot of work done like that. And that's one of the reasons... Were they? Well, yeah, absolutely. So this got cleaned up and he... He did very well. Um, there was a lot of scar tissue. He struggled to be able to straighten the leg because the wound is such an old wound. Mm. But the healing was beautiful and we praise the Lord for what he had done. Wow. So that, does that, I mean, when you guys think of experiences like this, is it, does it make it worth it for you guys to be there? For sure it does. Because people's lives are just changed. Um, and it gives us the opportunity to reach to them, to their hearts, yeah. spiritually as well. Mm -hmm. um, this is why we are there. You cannot. Um, because we, we want to reach to all classes. Mm -hmm. These are the more lower classes. We go into the compounds, you go into the bush. What do you mean um, compounds? Uh, compounds, uh, areas within towns uh -huh. or cities Home that are right on the outskirts. Uh -huh. and. People live very closely together uh -huh. and, and, uh -huh. and densely populated area, really. And it's no, a low class area. It's uh -huh. a low class area, a lot of violence, mm. um, no hygiene, mm. uh, pit no latrines, sanitation. no sanitation, things like no. that. You say pit latrines? Pit yeah. latrines. In town. In town. Yeah, yeah, no flush toilets. Wow. 
okay. things like that. Challenging. Yeah. You cannot work with people on a one-to-one -one basis like this mm -hmm. and think you're going to stay the same. It's not possible. Why would you want to change? Yeah. You know, we as people are really selfish and it's really ironic because when we went to Zambia, uh -huh. you know, you have this idea of, I'm the missionary. I'm going to go and teach people. <laughs> the irony is when you get there, you actually realize that I am the mission field. Mm -hmm. I am not the missionary. And the Lord really teaches you who you really are. And sometimes we don't like that picture. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't change it for anything. Because why? Why wouldn't you change that? Because what the Lord has done in my life uh -huh. is something that is worth more than anything else. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it's the joy of service for me. Uh -huh. You know, to see others saved, others are healed uh -huh. because of the power of God. Uh -huh. And uh, I, we can say it's not our work. Uh -huh. You know, we are just the instruments, we are just the, the channel. And when God works through a channel, the channel is cleaned. <laughs> Somebody else is also healed, but the channel is also clean. So you've realized benefits and blessings through oh. serving others. Eternal benefits. Abundantly. So do you think this is why God gives us the task of mission work? I think that's the, that's the major reason. To perfect His bride. That's right. Yeah. So do you think that you can be, do you think that you can pre prepare, be prepared or prepare your character for heaven without service, without service to others? No. Well, I, I, I've never seen that before. No. Um, not according to scripture, uh, but according to scripture, through education is the harmonious development of the physical, the spiritual, and the mental for service in this world and for service to come. Service to come where? In, in heaven. Service in heaven? That's no. right. I, 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 what, what about the cloud and the harp? Well, you get to heaven and just totally kick back and relax. And I hope that's not the only thing I'm going to do up there. <laughs> For a million <laughs> years, it'd get a little boring, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what's going to happen? I mean, what's your picture of what heaven's going to be like? It looks like service to me. Really? We, we're going to live for others up there. Um, we always think of, you know, of the text in Isaiah. It says, we're going to plant all these things and we're going to eat of it ourselves and all kinds of things. Uh -huh. It sounds almost selfish. Uh -huh. But it's, I think it's going to be something we're going to share with each other and we're going to help each other. And, yeah, and then and, what about Jesus? And talk about the character of God and share with others the character of God and show the character of God in our lives mm -hmm. at wow. that time. Wow. I believe also that we're going to have the privilege of visiting around other people we haven't seen and every time we will be able to share with them what God has done for us. You're talking we're going to be missionaries in heaven? We're going to be missionaries in heaven. Not that somebody <laughs> needs to be saved, but that you would have so much to tell. You don't know how to keep yeah. quiet. Yeah. The, the, the single most amazing event in the history of the universe. Christ, right. the God, that shining like the sun or brighter mm. than the sun, came and became That's right. this person that died on the That's cross. Right. Amazing, isn't it? Wow. And then when God creates a new earth, <clears throat> you get to tell them what this God did. That's mm -hmm. right. Wow. Yeah. So missionaries in heaven. Missionaries in heaven. Okay, so this mm -hmm. is the training ground. This is the, what, I mean, okay, so tell me more about Zambia. <laughs> yeah, because and, we, our main focus is training. Okay. We also extend our training so that we can teach um, disciples to start other projects as well, or teachers that uh, start other projects so as well. Planting and... Planting and ex extending. Yeah. We believe a secret of expanding the work is training. Mm. The more disciples you have, the more they can do. I can only do 100 people, but if I train 100 people, they, they can multiply. Yeah, right. Uh, so this is some of the training we do, and we send these men out to specific areas. Mm -hmm. We also train pioneers. Okay. Um, and what's a pioneer? Pioneer is a Bible worker. We call them Bible workers. So a pioneer okay. is somebody that is pioneering new unentered areas with, with a message There's of the There's still gospel. unentered areas in Zambia. You, believe it or not, um, Adventism <laughs> came into Zambia in 1902, 1903, uh -huh. somewhere there. Uh -huh. And we've been there more than 100 years. I mean, uh -huh. Adventist Church have been there more than 100 years. Uh -huh. There are still unentered areas. Wow. So we're trying to find those pockets and send men in. So we first have to train them. Sure. So they can be self-supportive, some carpentry and other things uh -huh. to do as well. Beautiful. So we have pioneers. Okay. We have established schools uh -huh. so that the pioneers can send also disciples or people that are interested in doing the work to uh -huh. these schools, train them, and send them out as well 
So it's not just Riverside training at the moment. Uh -huh. We have six other schools six. within in Zambia. Crazy. They are smaller entities, uh -huh. and we have trained these leaders to 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 run these self support supporting units. Um, but we have moved further than that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Through these trainings, we have our starting schools now um, in other countries as well. Uh -huh. uh, Malawi, Lesotho, down in South Africa. Uh -huh. uh, we have somebody in Burundi. We have somebody in Angola. Uh, we have somebody in Zimbabwe, wow. north of Kenya. So we're trying to reach more of Africa going up. We have now somebody also in the Muslim area in West Africa, uh -huh. in Mali, uh -huh. and uh, making the church aware of medical missionary work and get them excited uh -huh. and start a training school there as well. Praise the Lord. The challenge is at Riverside, we can only speak English. Okay. So everybody that's teaching speaks English and the, so the students that come have to be able to read and write English mm. and the challenge is that there's many people that would like to do this work mm -hmm. in their heart they want to go out and minister to the Lord but they don't speak the language mm. and up to this point we've had to exclude them because mm. we can't teach them right so now when we started these other schools they mm. can teach them in the vernacular languages Perfect. which we cannot do mm. And at the same Beautiful. time, you know, it's, it's costly for the Zambians to have to travel to Riverside every mm, time mm. to come and learn and to stay. Uh -huh. At these schools now, it's closer for them. They don't have to pay so much. Uh -huh. And there's even, there's the opportunity that if they cannot afford the studies, uh -huh. they can work for it. Uh -huh. So that people don't have to rely on money. If somebody's heart wants to do this work, we want to make it available it's to available. them. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Praise the Lord. So how many students with all six you know, how many they usually average? take anything from five, even one student is okay, uh -huh. as long as they start training people, because right. that one student can reach many. Uh -huh. But up to about 10 students they can take, uh -huh. and it's been running now for three to four years. Uh -huh. So probably if I just on the top of my head must say, probably reached already more than 200 people, uh, training more than 200 people altogether. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So those are going out to all these different countries. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. This looks like a beautiful place. Most people would look at the picture and say this doesn't belong in Africa, <laughs> not in Zambia. Well, there's like two different cultures. There's the local culture and then there's like the tourist culture, right? Now you mm. see what has happened in Zambia is the Western lifestyle has mm. come in very strongly. Oh, really? You know, probably about 40, 50 years ago, something like diabetes was unheard of. Oh. That you, you couldn't find somebody like that in Zambia, where today it's become an epidemic. Uh -huh. um, cancer. We spoke to one of the lab technicians of the university teaching hospital not too long ago, and, uh -huh. and he told us that one of these days, mm. the death rate of cancer is going to bypass that of AIDS. Really? Because they are seeing tumors and cancers at a rate that they don't even know what they're looking at anymore. And Whoa. this is because of the way the people's lifestyle has changed fast and drastically. And this is when we realized there's something we need to do, because up to this point, we had been reaching out to a lot of the the villages. Right, the poor. Your, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and we hadn't really reached the city like we could. Uh -huh. the, the middle class and the wealthy. That's it. So what the right. Lord had told us that with every training institution, there needs to be a lifestyle center. Mm. So this is where the idea was born out of then. Mm. And this is the lifestyle center that we have at Riverside. It's called Riverview Wellness Center, mm -hmm. where we now treat these lifestyle diseases that mm. these people have. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they didn't used to have cancer? There and it was it was, it was very unknown. much unknown. Was unknown really, yeah. and yeah. only since the new lifestyle and foods have come in from the West that cancer is. Yes, it's interesting. Wow, many products are imported from South Africa, mm -hmm. and all the malls and shopping centers are, are coming up like mushrooms and in, in Zambia. And, and of course, all the fast foods are coming in, wow. and it's been in, in Zambia now for about seven years or eight years, and it just in this short period of time. Changes have started happening. And you're seeing cancer yeah. come in the you last You see cancer, you see diabetes, diabetes high blood pressure. Wow. Yeah. wow. Zambia used to produce all, all its food. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the people, people ate naturally. Mm -hmm. um, all the fruits that you wanted, grains that were there, and, mm -hmm. you know, but now it's not there anymore. It's dying wow. out. Amazing. So, so this is relatively new. new uh, Yes, this has been up and running now for about six years. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so this has started after you guys got there. Yes. 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 So you designed it and. By God's grace, we everything. had a lot of people putting a lot of inputs, uh -huh. and now it's it's it's, it's up mm -hmm. and running. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Excellent. 
Now you can see here, we try to, when the people come, mm -hmm. we try to teach them not just treat the disease. Mm. You know, because if you're only treating the disease, it's the same as the doctors giving pills. You can just do it with herbs. Right. And, and many of the Zambians have gone towards that and they go, no, I, I don't want medicine, just give me a herb. Oh. So what we've tried to do is teach them, no, it's got to do with your lifestyle. You have to incorporate all of these things before it's going to get anywhere. So we do right. cooking classes, we do lectures. We've had the privilege of going different places, mm -hmm. trying to, to reach the cities. Um, Riverside had the privilege of being asked to come and teach the chefs for the pres one of the previous presidents wow. on, on how to cook healthful food because he himself was hypertensive and diabetic. Mm -hmm. So this was one of the times where we went and we, we helped to teach the, the chefs of the president how to cook wow. vegan food. <laughs> yeah, and cool. that, it just shows you how the medical mission you work <laughs> Or our our health work is really an entering wage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it helped us to even reach right up to the top to mm -hmm. the president mm -hmm. and cooking for him mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that was the privilege and a blessing yeah uh, we had a few ministers already coming mm -hmm. and uh, first president of, of Zambia um, Dr. Kuunda mm -hmm. he came for two sessions mm -hmm. yeah, and his wife came another session as well Wow and that was was quite a blessing yeah fantastic we have we have had a lot of, of, of your higher class, uh, members of parliament. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of these people come through the wellness center to come and be treated. Mm -hmm. Because the irony is these are the people that have the money and these are the people that have the sicknesses. <laughs> yeah. So they're the ones that come for treatment and we've uh -huh. had very good success in reaching these business people. These are just some of the treatments that we do, just given some examples. Mm -hmm. um, and these are very new to the people, but they're very open to it. Right. And more and more as they get to know it, okay. they're ready to come. Okay, excellent. We, we've just given you some photos quickly as, as our pioneers, our Bible workers, mm -hmm. um, in the primitive circumstances that they find themselves in. Mm -hmm. And they go to places where, where we don't go. <laughs> we can't go there. We, we mm -hmm. can't live like they live. Mm -hmm. um, and they are very humble, taking especially the literature with them. We use a lot of literature. Bible lessons we give to the people and so forth. And uh, this is the transport that they go. Mm -hmm. There's a whole group of them, about 65 of them, mm -hmm. that we train okay. uh, and send them out. Okay. Just to give is an the, idea. Is, this, is that on the, uh, your compound? This, this is These, at Riverside. Okay. This was at Riverside during a seminar. Uh -huh. We train them every year in two weeks again, train them different things. Uh -huh. uh, but oh, most okay. of these were trained under Riverside Beautiful. to go out Beautiful. and do the mission work. Okay. We realized that we cannot do everything by ourselves. Mm. And it's easier for their own culture to uh -huh. work with their culture right. um, okay. than us trying to, to, to try to find the, uh, uh, the way across those barriers. Right. The language barriers, the cultural barriers, all those type of things. Right. But if we train our own people, it goes so much faster. Right. So you're just so. enabling the local missionary. Yes. Yeah. To just show you how far we go <laughs> through rivers and all kinds of things. The pioneer carries it across if he doesn't have a boat and facing sometimes crocodiles and all kinds of things. I floods. Bet. Zambia has got a lot of floods because of the Zambezi River, mm. which is the main river that flows through Zambia. Uh -huh. And uh, there's just remote areas where they find themselves. But you get a lot of stories about that. Yes. <laughs> and then we're also involved in, because of the pioneers, we're involved in church building. Sure. Because new groups of believers um, are started you know, All different the places. Place. Yeah. places. Yeah. And so we do what we call the One Day Church Program. The ASI. Um, mm -hmm. ASI um, Maranatha uh, sponsor One Day with Church. Maranatha. Very good. And that really helps um, to, to, to get the message out there because now there's a church. And, you know, when you go into rural areas, people are attracted to a building. Mm. You know, they want to know what's happening here. Uh -huh. Man, th what is happening in this religion or this, this faith? Uh-huh. And then they go and so that's and, like a big attend. billboard out there. That's basically what the it is. is yeah. Many times when they see that, well, there's a bunch of people worshiping and, and they don't have a church. They think, well, you're not really important, and maybe you're just a bunch of crazy people meeting together. But somehow, <laughs> if you have a building, this becomes official. And I don't know. Well, maybe you're worth listening to. Right. Yeah. And then oh. the people will come. They and inquire. Look. What is this? What is this? What is this? Seven Day Adventists. What do they believe? And because they're very skeptical, sometimes they tell you, no, these guys are Satanists straight from the beginning. Whoa. And then you have to break those barriers slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Now this is an example of us trying to reach out towards the cities. Mm. Um, we have many different ways that we try to do this. This is, for example, we had a health buffet breakfast that we needed to serve 
where we got some of your high, middle to higher class people together. Mm -hmm. um, you give a lecture. Mm -hmm. They come and they taste, okay? Because, you know, most people, when you talk about healthy food, they think of carrot sticks. <laughs> yeah. and, and we can teach them that there's a lot more to this. It doesn't have to be something awful that, you know, lunchtime is depressing. <laughs> so we made a buffet breakfast. We let them come through, let them taste. And then after the breakfast, we did some health screening with them. Uh -huh. So when we had done the health screening, then they can really see, okay, well, wait a minute. Right. Maybe I do have a problem, and maybe I can look at this. And somehow right. they become more open to taking a little bit more advice right. and asking some more questions. Very good, mm -hmm. very good. Wow, well, we got through. Okay, so this is your, some the of your health, health screening. screening. Yes, that we do with the health expos. It helps quite a bit to do that. And basically every week we go into the city Mm -hmm. and do some of the government ministries. We just go make an appointment during the lunchtime, mm -hmm. say it's for free, we're going to do your screening for you. Really? And people really want to know what is their health condition. And that's where we make our personal contact, mm -hmm. share with them the love of Christ, and invite them to come to the wellness center at Riverside. Mm -hmm. Come out of the city, come and spend 10 days with us. Right. And um, that's how we reach their hearts. Even now when we well. go back, uh -huh. um, we have appointments waiting for us. Uh -huh. um, I have health screening that needs to be done at High Court, at the Supreme Court, at the National Assembly. So these are all already lined up and I, we just wow. need to go back and do the job. <laughs> are you excited to get back? Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, okay, we've got a couple minutes left, but what kind of needs do you have? What, what would you like to share with us here in America? Mm or actually Mission TV goes around the world, it's on the internet. So what kind of needs would you, what would you like to say or what kind of message would mm -hmm. you like? I mean, do you need volunteers? Do you need funding? Do you just want to encourage others to get involved? Prayers, what, what's on your heart? Yeah, I would say prayer is probably the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, to God, money is not an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To God, every, everything belongs to Him. Mm -hmm. If people feel that they want to give something to, to Riverside, or we will use it as they direct, as God helps them. Right. Um, but prayer is the, is the power mm -hmm. that drives everything that we do. Mm -hmm. We have love for souls. Mm -hmm. If people want to get involved, mm -hmm. they're welcome to contact us and we can give the, the, the email and, and people can contact us. Okay. But for us, is the most important thing is to, to train as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whichever direction we go, health, through the Bible pioneers, mm -hmm. um, whatever it may be, uh, we just want to start new projects um, so that more people can be trained. So why do you want to start all these new projects? What's the ultimate goal? Well, the gospel has to go to all the nations. And then, That's what, what Jesus said we need to do. Right. So if we're not making that effort through His grace right. and just sit at one place and just have Riverside, uh -huh. it's never going to go anywhere. Right. So we have to venture in faith, um, going out, and, and, and we just see what God is doing. Yeah. And He provides right. um, through people or directly through His wonderful grace and protection. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, yes. I would like to encourage the people to mm -hmm. get involved. It yeah. doesn't have to be at Riverside. It can be anywhere. But you've got to get out of your box. <laughs> get out of your comfort zone and, and put your feet in the water. Because I promise you, you, you cannot come back the same. Mm. You know, if you've really gone, and, and I don't mean go somewhere just to still your conscience. I mean, go to give something of yourself. Mm. If you've gone and really given of yourself, it's an experience you'll never forget. Mm. And that's what I would like people to experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have any desire to go back to, and get a regular job and get a regular paycheck and nine to five? And No, not at all. Not at the moment, unless God but it's leads more, that direction. But it's more, yes, I mean, it's but more trustworthy. You know where your next paycheck's coming from. You know where everything's I up. think faith is safer. Yeah. I, <laughs> I because don't really uh, believe that. If we, if we believe in God uh -huh. and we need protection, we are in His hands. And that's the safest place you can be. Amen. To have a regular job with, with a regular salary, th those are human things. Uh -huh. you know, Jesus didn't draw a salary from anywhere. You know, he depended on His Father. That was the safest place to be. And that's where we want to be right. um, within His service, wherever God is directing and sending us. Praise the Lord. How can we get in touch with you? Do you have a website? or? Yes, the website they can look under Riverside Farm. Okay. Um, dot com. Oh, okay. Uh, or they can is it dot com dot org. Dot 
at riversidefarminstitute.org. Okay. .org. If she knows a bit, she works with it more than often. So riversidefarminstitute.org. Or, they, Institute. 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 Org. Org. or okay. they can send us an email. It's really easy. It's R um, F I Riverside Farm Institute at zamnet dot Z M for the Americans. Z M. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then also the, um, the OCI Outpost Centers dot org. That's correct. You're listed under there. Yeah. And so if people want to see the wellness center, it's the Riverview Wellness Center. Okay. Dot org. What's the cost, real quick, what's the cost of going through a treatment at the Riverside Center? If you go in our best rooms uh -huh. and with all the treatments and, and, and food, it's uh -huh. about $1,000. 1000 US. For 10 days. Everything included. Praise so your Lord. accommodation, your treatment, your meals, your detox program, everything, the physical examination, pathology tests, it's going to cost you thousand dollars for ten days. Wow! So you could fly there and back, and get the treatment for about the same price. That's right. As staying here. Well, um, this is exciting, and I hope I know that you've been blessed by their testimony, not just what they're doing, but the experience that God is placing and and bringing them into and through. And I think that this experience is available to anybody, anybody that knows God and takes the chance. Takes the. It's not a. It's not a risk. You may lose some things, but the things that you lose are the things you probably need to lose and want to lose mm -hmm. anyway. And the mm -hmm. things that you gain, uh, well, you, you just got to try it and see. Um, so uh, thank you for being here the Riverside Farm all the way from Zambia, Africa. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching here on the Mission TV show from the OCI Leadership Training Retreat in Cohota Springs, Georgia. God bless you. Mm -hmm.